Hey guys, it's Austin here with OutJeeping, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install an add a leaf suspension lift kit to your existing leaf springs. Now, today I got a uh, Rough Country add a leaf. I know I'm going to get some hate for saying that these are cheap, but for this Jeep specifically, it just needs to uh, have a lift kit for a couple months. Over time, these eventually will sag. That's because the uh, stock factory leafs that are on these Jeep Cherokees, they're not meant to hold up for a lot of the off road abuse. But I'm going to be showing you guys how to install them, so let's get started. So we're going to be doing these Adelis leafs on this 2000 Jeep Cherokee. It's going to be similar across all uh, Jeep Cherokee models from 84 to 01. Now the way we're going to be installing this Adelis leaf on this Jeep today is with the leaf pack still in the Jeep. And it's going to be a lot easier than having to unbolt the entire leaf spring because that way we don't have to deal with the uh, bolts that, if you know from these Cherokees, they like to rust inside the leaf spring bushing and then you're going to end up having to cut those off. So this is actually going to be a little bit easier than dealing with that. So what we got to do is actually jack up the rear end of the vehicle with uh, jack sands underneath the frame. That way we should be able to pop off the wheels, lower the axle down with the jack so that way it's at full droop, then unbolt the axle from the leaf springs, then we can proceed to take apart the leaf packs. So let's get started with jacking it up. So we have the rear end of the Jeep on jack stands up here on the frame and then we also have the jack underneath the rear axle to support it while we take everything apart. But the next step we have to do is remove the U-bolts that hold the leaf spring to the axle and these are going to be 18 millimeter. And then we're also going to be removing the rear sway bar entirely because it's not necessary for the lift kit we have. So it's also attached to one of the U-bolts up here so that should take care of this side. Then we also have two 15 millimeter bolts that go up into the frame so that should uh, take care of that and it's going to be on both sides. And then we also have to take the rear shocks off. On the lower side we have an 18 millimeter nut that should pop off easily. Then up on the top we have two 13 millimeter bolts. Now if you have factory uh, shocks on here they're most likely going to snap off when you try and remove those 13 millimeter bolts. Um, so if that happens you can take an air chisel and actually pound out the welded nut that's on the top side and then you can actually feed in a 5 16 bolt from the access hole in there and that's what we're going to do today and all you got to do is just take a uh, wrench and then hold it from the top side. Now they do also make kits that have a uh, welded nut on a flange and you can feed that through the access hole that way you don't have to hold a wrench in there. Rough Country makes it along with a couple other companies but we don't have that today so we're just going to have to use it with a 5 16 bolt. <laughs> All right, so with the U-bolts removed on both sides and these two 15 millimeter nuts undone on both sides, we should be able to fish out the sway bar. Might be kind of difficult, but you gotta basically work it around the exhaust and the drive shaft and it should come out. That's our rear sway bar. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is remove this rear shock. All right, now we just gotta get the upper shock bolts and this axle should be ready for us to drop it down. All right, so with the shocks out of there, we're ready to drop the axle. Um, I wasn't able to film up underneath on the top side of the shock because it's a little bit hard to get in there, but eventually we got that off on both sides. So we're going to go and drop this with the jack underneath the uh, axle right there. should also note that the brake line, it's probably not long enough. We have ours disconnected from the breather bolt that goes down to the axle for now. We're going to put an extended brake line on later at a different time, but for now this should be fine. So that way there shouldn't be no binding. Oh. Wow. 
That's what it looks like when a Jeep sits low. So right now it's actually just rusted on a little bit. So we're gonna give it a couple kicks. There he goes. All right, so now our axle is completely disconnect from our leaf springs. And the next step we gotta do is actually cut off these old uh, factory um, leaf spring pack holders. I'm just gonna take a cutoff wheel and zip off these three right here. And then I'm gonna take a couple C clamps and clamp the pack together. And then we're gonna cut off the center bolt because it's most likely gonna be rusted, actually is. Um, because normally there's gonna be a top nut right here. If yours isn't rusted, you can take this top nut and try and spin it off and hold the bottom because all it is is a stud. Um, but we're just gonna end up cutting that and then our leaf pack should come undone um, once we start loosening up the seat clamps. All right, so with those cut off, you can just simply peel it away. And these old factory retainers that hold the leaf packs together should just slide right off. All right, so now with those retainers off, we're gonna take two C-clamps at least and put them on each side of the center bolt right here. And then we should be able to cut that off. Okay, so now with those two C-clamps on here, it's gonna compress the leaf springs together so that way they won't spring out when you undo this uh, bolt right here. So I'm just gonna cut this off. All right, and I believe that popped free. All right, so with that nut cut off, I'm gonna slowly retract on the C-clamps. That way we should uh, slowly separate the leaf packs, and that way they don't just uh, jump apart. So I'm gonna take turns, go back and forth, so that way it unloads it evenly. All right, so as you can see, all of the leaves have been removed except for the main leaf, which has the eyelets that hold the bushings in that's actually attached to the vehicle. And down here, I have the rest of the leaves. And as you can see, the nice shiny black one right here, this is our add a leaf. And you wanna position it so that it goes right in the leaf pack. So you have the biggest over here and then it goes down smaller. And the add a leaf is pretty symmetrical so it doesn't matter if one side's flipped or the other. You just wanna make sure that the, uh, where it lines up over here, the center pin is gonna hold in, that everything looks nicely so that you got your bigger one going to your smaller one all the way down to your smallest over here. And it should look the same on the other side over here. So now we're gonna put the uh, leaves back in over here and we're actually going to line up the uh, center pin so it bolts into here and then we're gonna slowly um, tighten everything up. I will use some uh, C-clamps again to uh, tighten the leaf packs back up together so that way we don't put too much stress on the center bolt tightening everything together. All right, so I had the C-clamps assist me in place and I'm just gonna finish off tightening this down. I'm gonna eventually cut off the rest of the stud that's on here, but right now I'm just using a 13 millimeter uh, ratchet wrench and I'm gonna snug this center bolt down right here. And it's not spinning on the bottom, which is nice because it's just a uh, nice uh, stud that's on there. Um, if it is spinning, you can take a uh, pliers or a vice grip to hold it in place while you're tightening it. Now as you're tightening this up, you wanna make sure that your leaves are all centered under the main leaf and you can do that by just tapping on it on the ends with the hammer. All right, so once that's tightened down, I'm just gonna take a cutoff wheel and cut off the rest of the stud. All right, now the last step we gotta do is install our new uh, retaining clamps. These basically just go in here and help the uh, leaf springs from sliding around. And with the kit, they come with uh, new ones. So all we have to do is put these two tab ones on the bottom, take our little plate, throw it on top, and line up the holes. And then we just take a hammer and pound in the little tabs and it should hold it in place. All right, so to set these clamps in, um, it's a lot easier if you use a C-clamp to uh, squeeze this all together. Then all you gotta do is just take your hammer and pound in these tabs as much as you can with it in the way. And then I'm gonna actually remove the C-clamp out of the way and then I should be able to pound in the rest 
and pound it flat all the way. And then you can remove your seat clamp. Now I can repeat the process on the other two. There should be a total of three clamps per leaf spring. All right, so once you have both leaf packs all bolted back up together, you can go and put everything else back together, which would be bolting up the axle, putting the shocks back on. Um, I was able to film that because we're in the time crunch, but it's pretty straightforward. But this is going to be a wrap for today's video. Hopefully you guys learned something on how to do an add leaf suspension, or if you're just rebuilding leaf packs, it's going to be the same process. And this works on other vehicles too, obviously that have leaf springs, not just the Jeep Cherokee. So if you guys learned something, make sure to like and subscribe to the OutJeeping YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or comments, make sure to post them below and I'll get back to you shortly. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.